Nearly $5 billion is the amount NASA wasted on Boeing to develop the CST-100 Starliner spacecraft for the commercial crew program. Ten years is the time we've been waiting for the first Starliner crewed test flight. What a terrible waste of resources. Meanwhile, with less funding and half that time, SpaceX Crew Dragon has done extraordinary things and become NASA's powerful right hand. It's a shame that a company with a history of more than 100 years was easily defeated by a 22-year-old startup that was ridiculed from its early days. Even Boeing's humiliation has recently been pushed to a higher level as SpaceX Dragon continues to mark new history. It over SpaceX Crew Dragon just completely humiliated Boeing's Starliner. Although NASA was disappointed earlier this month to lose its first chance at a moon landing in the Peregrine mission, the success of SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule in the latter mission has at least given them some consolation. On January 18, SpaceX Falcon 9 carried successfully the company's Dragon spacecraft into orbit under Axiom Space's Axiom Mission 3 from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Axiom 3 is the third all-private astronaut mission, sending four multinational crew members to the space station. Go Ax 3! Congratulations to Axiom Space and SpaceX on a successful launch. This mission shows the power of American innovation and ingenuity. Together, with our international and commercial partners, NASA will further our reach in the cosmos for the benefit of all humanity, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. On January 20, Dragon with those four astronauts docked safely at ISS. Everything went smoothly, signaling that Crew Dragon had once again excellently completed the assigned task. Four crews in this mission are considered the pioneers for redefining the pathway to low Earth orbit, LEO and helping chart a course toward Axiom Station, the world's first commercial space station. By the early 1990s, 7,607 kilonewtons. So, it's safe to say that in terms of time, the emergency of this mission is highly evaluated. What if Dragon encounters a problem that results in an indefinite delay or, even worse, a catastrophic failure along the way? Fortunately, SpaceX Dragon still stands unrivaled as the best spacecraft in the world now. Otherwise, to put it more gently, NASA will not have any alternative at this time. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane is just in its early stage of development, whereas Boeing's Starliner, well, has long been a nightmare for both NASA and taxpayers. The first crewed test flight of Starliner has been pushed back an additional month to no earlier than mid-April 2024. No reason was given for the change. The target date for the first operational flight of the Boeing spaceship has also been delayed, to early 2025 from summer 2024. The Crew Flight Test CFT, mission has faced a series of delays due to various technical problems, pushing its liftoff back repeatedly. For example, CFT had been slated to fly in July of last year, but that plan was scuttled after teams discovered issues with Starliner's wiring and its parachute system. Perhaps no one thought that one day Boeing would fall into such a tragic situation. How funny to rethink the fact that in 2014 when the contracts for NASA's commercial crew program were awarded to two companies, Boeing and SpaceX, everybody including some members of Congress even poo-pooed Elon Musk and his SpaceX company as little more than a delusional billionaire's fantasy. By contrast, Boeing stood out with a legacy in aerospace that stretched back more than 100 years and a role in every major moment in NASA's history. Oh, Boeing is a legacy company, just let Boeing do it. NASA was also very cautious as they gave Boeing the lion's share, slightly more than 60% of the $6.8 billion NASA awarded, equivalent to $4.2 billion. With the same amount of work, SpaceX just got $2.6 billion. But just with that $2.6 billion, the young private company made history. Candy, white, cone-shaped capsule that stands 8.1 meters tall with a diameter is the first crewed launch to orbit by a private corporation, but also a signal for the end of the era in which only government-owned spacecraft achieved such feats. So far, Crew Dragon has played an important role in NASA's major missions. Back on June 7, 2023, SpaceX noted on X that they successfully launched 38 missions to the ISS for its capsule besting the 37 such flights that NASA's Space Shuttle orbiters racked up. This shows how great its safety level and its reliability are. Not only safe, 
Dragon also stands out with its modern capsule design, giving astronauts comfort during the long journey to orbit. Let's verify this through the sharing of astronauts who enjoyed the convenience inside Dragon. According to NASA astronaut and pilot Megan MacArthur, who went into the ISS on SpaceX's spacecraft during the Crew-2 mission, the ride was really smooth. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Another astronaut, Thomas Pesquet, who accompanied MacArthur, also was fired up the ride up was fantastic, as you can see it's pretty roomy, he said. Adding, the inside is very comfy and we feel very well protected. It was a lovely ride. It was the softest docking I've ever felt. Axiom 2 Commander Peggy Whitson radioed SpaceX flight controllers, referring to three earlier trips to the station aboard a space shuttle and Russian Soyuz ferry ships. Very well done. We do aim for excellence, a controller replied. And on behalf of SpaceX, it's been a pleasure working with you. Obviously, we do not know yet if NASA's astronauts feel the same when they sit inside Starliner because this vehicle has not flown yet. At the time I made this report, SpaceX's Crew Dragon had completed the Crew 7 mission and is in preparation for Crew 8, which is targeted for no earlier than mid-February. Meanwhile, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft still hadn't gotten off the ground with astronauts. Indeed, after Starliner's first successful try to dock with the ISS in May 2022, NASA waited for Boeing's first crewed flight test that would send a crew of two to the ISS for a short stay. This is the final test flight of Starliner, which will be cleared to begin operational flights after the results of this test are evaluated. Although it had an original goal of 2017, various delays pushed this back many times and the latest announcement for the test's date, as we know, is no earlier than mid-April 2024. Boeing's delays prompted NASA to extend the contract to SpaceX covering eight additional Crew Dragon flights to the space station, each lasting up to seven months at an average cost of $277 million per mission. From 2014 to 2023, SpaceX's entire commercial crew contract was valued at more than $4.9 billion, according to NASA. However, the $4.9 billion that SpaceX got was used more effectively than the nearly $5 billion that Boeing initially got. As of July 2023, Boeing reported a $257 million charge in the second quarter for its Starliner astronaut spacecraft program, bringing the program's to-date overrun costs to $1.5 billion as delays continue. Since a nearly $5 billion fixed-price contract to develop Starliner was awarded in 2014, the company has recorded losses on the program almost every year. The annual losses have ranged from $57 million in 2018 to $489 million in 2019. Not only that, a fee for a Starliner seat is not cheap, roughly $90 million, more than the $55 million on a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft or even what NASA pays Roscosmos for Soyuz seats. This is a nightmare not only for NASA but also for taxpayers. Imagine how bitter you feel when a large amount of tax money paid every year is wasted on a fruitless project that stalls for a long time. It's so weird no matter how bad it is, Starliner's project has not yet been cancelled. Both NASA and Boeing are still preparing for the vehicle's first crew flight test. We don't know how NASA will allocate missions to Boeing spacecraft in the future. However, there is an obvious truth that SpaceX's Dragon will still be an irreplaceable vehicle and a powerful right hand for national programs in the long run. It can be said that from the moment the top designer of the Russian National Space Agency spat on Elon Musk's shoe during the 2001 negotiation, the Russian aerospace industry could not have conceived that its end was near arrival. Just one year later, Elon Musk founded Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, commonly referred to as SpaceX, with the goal of reducing space transportation costs and colonizing Mars. In May 2020, atop SpaceX's Falcon 9, Crew Dragon spacecraft carried NASA astronauts Douglas Hurley and Robert Behenkin to the International Space Station in the first crewed orbital spaceflight launched from the United States since the final space shuttle mission in 2011. This milestone ended NASA's dependence on Russia's Soyuz, and as of 2023, SpaceX's Crew Dragon is the only United States human-rated orbital transport spacecraft to transport crews to and from the ISS under NASA's commercial crew program. Not only Dragon, but Falcon 9 is also very well known by several records. This year alone marked the 90 the launch of this workhorse rocket, far surpassing all other rockets. 
SpaceX reused more than 90% of the rockets it launched in 2023 and also launched 1 million kilograms of cargo into orbit. Now let's see what Elon Musk's Insulter built. The Soyuz rocket is considered the Russian workhorse, one of the most often used rockets and one of the world's most reliable space vehicles alike. Since its original incarnation took flight in 1966, the Soyuz family of rockets has racked up almost 2,000 missions. However, all belong to the past since currently, the Russians' pride has gradually been left in the dust. Although 2023 is coming to an end, Russia just launched 18 flights overall this year with 16 flights using the Soyuz rocket. Notably, most of the payloads launched by Russian rockets were developed domestically to give a sense of what's happening with their space program. What a shame. But please tell me what's exactly going on. Everything starts from the sensitive political aspect. Okay, in this video, I will not discuss the rights and wrongs of the 2022 invasion of Ukraine. It would be better if I talked about the impact of this war on Russia's space sectors. By destroying collaborations with Europe, Russia has transformed itself into the world's first former space power. The Soviet Union lived its glorious years in the early years of the space race when it often came out on top. As it raced to beat the United States, it launched the first satellite and the first astronaut and made considerable advancements in rocketry. After the Soviet Union fell in 1991, Roscosmos also inherited rocket technology. By the early 1990s, updated versions of Soyuz, a Soviet rocket first launched in 1966, and Proton, a Soviet rocket launched in 1965, were still reliable and in use. The European Space Agency was concerned at the time that it could not maintain access to space by relying on its own rockets or American ones. In 1996, an arrangement was forged so that France-based Ariana Spaces A, the world's first private launch company, could market and operate Soyuz rockets. Roscosmos and the Europeans agreed a few years later to build launch facilities for the Soyuz at the French-operated European spaceport in French Guiana. It was a winning deal. Europe gained access to launch services and Russia received an important financial lifeline. As recently as 2013, Russia controlled around half of the global commercial launch industry. But competition loomed. SpaceX was born in 2002. By 2020, SpaceX represented half of the commercial satellite launch market, and Russia was down to 10%. That was a problem. Over the years, as Russia's economy struggled, Roscosmos had leaned on commercial activities for funding. As businesses moved elsewhere, that funding suffered. Between 2014 and 2020, Roscosmos' budget fell from $5 billion to $1.4 billion, while NASA's 2021 budget was $23.3 billion. A few years ago, President Vladimir Putin declared that Russia needed to master new rocket technologies to compete for commercial space launches against SpaceX and then proceeded to cut funding for Russia's spaceflight activities even more. Roscosmos could still count on the ISS and its commercial collaborations with Europe for financing. The most important European example was a record $1 billion contract signed by OneWeb, a British satellite broadband provider, for 21 launches via Ariane Space. Then Russia invaded Ukraine, drawing sanctions from the European Union and the United Kingdom. Roscosmos responded by suspending rocket operations and recalling Russian staff from the French Guiana spaceport. That left four European satellites and one space telescope in search of new launch vehicles. A few days later, Roscosmos informed OneWeb that it would not launch its satellites unless it received guarantees that the satellites would not be used for military purposes and the United Kingdom government would divest from OneWeb ownership. OneWeb responded by hiring SpaceX to take Russia's place. The European Space Agency informed Russia that it would no longer collaborate on a joint Mars mission, which it can afford to pursue alone. Roscosmos cannot. Amid sanctions and Russia's belligerence toward its European partners, who would hire it? That leaves a once proud space program with no apparent way to remain relevant as a space power. Another reason I cannot help but say is that Russian technology is so backward that it is easily surpassed by many new modern technologies, especially in the context of the rocket industry moving towards commercialization. What's most notable is the Soyuz is an expendable rocket. The four engines fall back to Earth when their fuel is spent, and the main core is not reusable either. It's an awfully expensive business. 
Newer rockets, like the Falcon family rocket, are partly reusable meaning its first stage engine lands itself back on Earth. Even SpaceX has pushed its heritage further with the fully reusable Starship rocket. The Russian space agency, Roscosmos, isn't known for being transparent about its costs, but it charges America and Europe's space agencies, NASA and ESA just north of $80 million or 70.7 million euros per seat or per astronaut, according to 2018 estimates. So it's got to cost a lot to fly a Soyuz. By comparison, the Falcon 9 costs $62 million per launch and its larger sibling rocket, the Falcon Heavy, costs $90 million tops. One more reason to say goodbye to the Russian old generation rocket is about thrust. For example, Soyuz 2's first thrust is 3,357 kilonewtons, half that of the Falcon 9 with 7,607 kilonewtons. Obviously, lower thrust will result in lower payload capacity. The Soyuz 2 can carry a maximum payload of 8,600 kilograms or 18.96 pounds to low Earth orbit for communications satellites and the ISS. This number is 22,800 kilograms or 50.265 pounds for SpaceX's workhorse rocket. Another aspect that is worth noting is about spacecraft. Perhaps I won't need to describe much about the Soyuz spacecraft because you know very well about its crampedness. You know, Soyuz is so small, the habitable space in the descent module is just four cubic meters. From a crew comfort viewpoint, the Soyuz is cramped, I might even say cramped squared. Once strapped in, astronaut heels are nearly in contact with the butt. They are tied down at eight points to a form-fitting couch, making it difficult to move anything other than their arms. They can only swivel their heads and wiggle their toes. Meanwhile, a dragon is a more elongated, candy, white, cone-shaped capsule that stands 8.1 meters tall with a diameter just greater than 4 meters with 11 cubic meters of internal volume. Importantly, Dragon can be a business class of spaceship, safe and comfortable. Its astronaut-specific amenities include four big windows, advanced avionics, computer systems, and touchscreen displays, including controls for interior temperature, which can be set between 18 to 27 degrees Celsius, and of course, seats.